Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm doing another virtual interview like I did with the Billabong Sanctuary. So we sent them our questions and they sent back their answers and we're going to piece together the clips and editing. So today we are working with Patrick Barnhart with the USGS, which is the United States Geological Survey Team. It took me a while to learn that. So today we're going to be talking about the brown tree snake and the effects of the snake in Guam. And I had a lot of family in Guam, so I was really interested in this topic yet again. So, let's go ahead and get started. So can you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about the rapid response team that you are a part of? So my name is Patrick Barnhart and I'm the USGS Brown Tree Snake Rapid Response Team Coordinator here on Guam. Uh, I've been on Guam working with brown tree snakes for about the last six years. Um, BTS uh, Rapid Response Team is a multi-agency team of people that have been trained to respond to if a snake is sighted outside of Guam. Uh, and our team consists of federal, state, and local officials from islands throughout the Pacific region. So if a snake is sighted, uh, trained members uh, on the island where the snake is seen uh, will begin an in initial assessment. And if we, uh, as a group, deem that the sighting is credible, uh, team members from Guam and other islands will deploy to set up a response effort. Uh, and during that response effort, we'll set up a visual survey transects that we will walk at night with bright headlamps looking for snakes. Uh, we'll set up traps that the snakes are attracted to. Uh, we'll set up cameras on those traps to see if we can find uh, evidence of snakes that don't actually go into traps. Um, and our main goal is obviously to find the snake that was seen, uh, but also to determine if there's a population of snakes established on the island. Uh, we also do a lot of outreach during a, a rapid response uh, that includes town hall meetings, radio and TV spots, uh, attending local festivals, and school presentations. For those people watching that are not familiar with the brown tree snake, is that snake native to Guam? Uh, no, brown tree snakes are not native to Guam. They're an invasive species that were introduced uh, after World War II. Guam has no native snakes. How did the brown tree snake end up in Guam? So after World War II, uh, military equipment was consolidated from across the Pacific region uh, to the island of Guam. Uh, and unfortunately, brown tree snakes were able to make their way into that cargo uh, that was sitting, we believe, on the Admiralty Islands, which are part of uh, Papua New Guinea, uh, just north of northern Australia, so around that area, and they were accidentally transported to Guam. Uh, snakes arrived on Guam, and none of the native species had any idea of what a snake was or that it was a predator, and so they had no natural defenses against them. Uh, and since brown tree snakes are kind of a generalist species, meaning they're not super picky about what they eat, uh, they were able to easily become established on Guam. Uh, and it took a few years, but eventually they spread across the whole island, uh, causing the extinction or extirpation of several of Guam's native species. What is the impact of the brown tree snake on the animals in Guam? So with no natural defenses against snakes, uh, brown tree snakes were easily able to consume native bird species. Uh, and the more the snakes ate, the more they were able to grow and reproduce and then spread. Uh, and eventually, most of the native bird species on Guam were gone. For those who watched my Guam rail video, we learned that several birds are considered extinct in the wild. So what birds fall into this category? All right, so originally, before brown tree snakes, there were about 12 native bird spe or forest bird species here on Guam. Uh, some of those were endem endemic, meaning uh, that they're only found on the island of Guam. Uh, but thankfully, some of the species are also found on other islands in the Mariana Island chain. Uh, today, however, the island of Guam only has two of those 12 native bird species, or forest bird species, left. Um, we've got the Micronesian starling and the Mariana swiftlet, uh, both of which are in isolated populations, meaning so they're not widespread over the island, they're just kind of in small pockets. Um, I believe you talked about the Guam rail uh, here on Guam, it's called the Cocoa Bird. Uh, they have been reintroduced to the small island of the, off the southern tip of Guam called Cocos Island um, and also to an island north of Guam called Rhoda. Uh, Cocos Island is a small island and it's snake and rodent free so the Guam rail is able to establish there and, 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 and live without the threat of snakes. Are there any native birds that are at risk of going extinct in Guam? So as long as brown tree snakes are here on Guam in the number that they are, um, it's always a possibility. 
Uh, however, many uh, agencies are working very hard to keep that from happening and keep those remaining species uh, around, as well as trying to reintroduce some native species uh, that are no longer found in the wild here on Guam. Are there any reptiles or mammals that have been affected by the brown tree snake? Uh, the brown tree snake has been implicated in the decline or extinction of several native lizard species that are no longer found on the main island of Guam, uh, as well as uh, the two bat species that used to be found here. Uh, we still have a few of the, the native finihi or the Mariana fruit bat, but the Pacific sh uh, sheath-tailed bat that used to be here hasn't been seen in decades, uh, and that's likely uh, brown tree snakes are having a, a major impact on them. Um, with the, the native lizard species, uh, a lot of them, like I said, are no longer found here on the main island of Guam, but on Cocos Island, just to the south of us, uh, there are a few uh, places where you can still find those species. And, and several of those species are found on other islands north of Guam as well. Are the brown tree snakes venomous in any way, and do they pose a threat to people? So technically, brown tree snakes are venomous. Um, they're rear fanged. So they don't have like a hypodermic needle like you would think of um, uh, like a rattlesnake or, or a cotton mouth having. Uh, they have a grooved tooth in the very back of their mouth. Uh, and what they do is they have to clamp onto their prey and then start chewing. And that chewing motion releases venom and that venom runs down the groove in the tooth and uh, gets into their prey. Uh, as for being a, a, a danger to people here on Guam, uh, for the most part, no. Their venom's not really going to affect uh, a human, uh, but they, they could have uh, some adverse effects on an infant or uh, an elderly person. Anybody that's immunocompromised could potentially have some kind of effect from the brown tree snake venom. Uh, but other than that, your average person wouldn't have much of an effect from the venom other than just the shock of being bit by a snake. So we see it with some invasive species, how some animals learn to adapt to prey on these invasive species. So are there any predators that have learned to eat the brown tree snake? Uh, brown tree snakes here on Guam have no native predators. Uh, occasionally introduced species like pigs or dogs or feral cats will eat them. Uh, and of course humans, we're trying to get rid of them, but no native predators, no. My dad was actually stationed in Guam and he was telling me that brown tree snakes sometimes cause power outages. And how is that possible? Uh, so brown tree snakes are great climbers, hence the name tree snake. Um, they're used to climb up the power equipment, uh, get on power lines and cross those lines and cause shortages that would then cause blackouts throughout the island, uh, blowing transformers or other uh, power issues. Uh, thankfully, that doesn't happen quite as much anymore because they're, um, the equipment's better, um, there are traps placed around uh, power hubs and substations, as well as visual, visual monitoring that's done uh, to, to keep brown tree snakes out of there. So thankfully, that's not a huge issue anymore. Are there any programs that are in place to eradicate the brown tree snake, or at least to minimize its impact? And if so, which ones are you familiar with? Sure, so there's been a lot of research done to try to eradicate or control brown tree snakes here on Guam. Um, multiple agencies are involved with developing technologies that will help with this. Uh, and one of the really cool ones that's being uh, looked into right now, uh, USGS, who I work for in, in cooperation with uh, USDA, uh, USDA developed a aerial delivery uh, machine that will spread toxic baits. The baits are toxic only to snakes. Um, throughout the jungle um, from a helicopter. Um, these baits have acetaminophen uh, on them, which is toxic to the snakes. Uh, and the, the helicopter flies over an area that's being treated and it drops these baits and the baits are in little capsules that open up and float down and get caught in the canopy so the snakes can get a hold of them. Uh, with repeated treatments, uh, population decreases have been seen. So while this tool is still being developed and perfected, uh, it looks like it could be a viable option. Uh, along with uh, the traps that we have to reduce populations in specific areas, uh, multi-species barriers that keep snakes out of specific areas, uh, things like that. Um, USGS is involved with a lot of these projects to, to research uh, uh, the snakes themselves, but also the, the effectiveness of tools that are being developed so that they can be improved upon and work even better. Um, 
And like I said, there's also traps around important areas uh, like airports and seaports, and that's to reduce the snake population in those areas and to keep them from getting into cargo that leaves Guam and goes to other islands because we don't want uh, other islands to suffer the same fate that Guam has. Other than the programs the island of the Cincinnati Zoo, are there any other programs that are in place to breed or even reintroduce native birds back to Guam? Um, I believe there are, but I'm not directly involved with any of those, so I can't really talk too much about it. But uh, there are several agencies working on breeding native birds and reintroduction efforts uh, here on Guam. So is there anything else about the brown shoe snake that you would like to tell us or about future projects coming up? Um, so the rapid response team that I'm the coordinator of uh, is part of uh, the USGS Brown Tree Snake Project. Uh, we're doing research constantly to try to understand the snakes so that we can better uh, combat them and to test control tools so that we have as much knowledge as possible to be able to fight against this invasive species. Um, one of the brown tree snake community's goals, and as the community, I'm, I'm talking about federal, state, and local agencies, uh, they're all working in conjunction on multiple projects uh, for, with uh, the brown tree snake control. Um, so we're trying to control the population here on Guam, but another major effort is to keeping the snakes from spreading to other islands. Uh, and that's uh, part of what my team, the rapid response team, is involved in. Uh, Guam is a major hub for cargo throughout the region. Uh, so a lot of stuff passes through Guam before it gets to other islands. Uh, and thanks to the efforts of, of many different federal, state, and local agencies, we've managed to keep brown tree snakes from establishing on other islands. So that's, that's a great win. Uh, and while snakes have been seen on other islands in the past, they're just single individuals. And, and all evidence that we have right now points towards no other islands having an established population. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what, what, what my main focus is, is working to keep those islands snake free. Uh, and I do that with the help of, of a, a litany of other people. Well, thank you so much, Patrick, for telling us about the brown tree snake and their impact on the island. Again, I find this a super interesting topic to learn about, especially since I had a lot of family in Guam. So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Cole Shirk. As always, I'll see you next week.